Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And Venus is finally going to go direct on 25th June morning. Mm -hmm. And now is the time that we will uh, understand the things that we contemplated from the last 45 days. And many of you have uh, messaged me regarding this. After watching my Venus uh, retrograde video, which I had made long back, and the Venus uh, retrograde in Rohini video, which also I had made. So many of you told me that the last 45 days were full of introspection and uh, self-discovery, inner discovery, regarding the houses which Venus rules in your chart, according to the Ascendant. And many of you told me that um, there are different things which you thought which uh, would have been right before Venus was retrograde but uh, after Venus went retrograde you started feeling that uh, these things are not actually right and we need to uh, correct them actually so therefore retrograde periods are really very beautiful periods so many times people have this misconception with uh, retrograde planets that retrograde planets are bad you know they are terrible they will kill you they will give you divorce or all these things none of this is true actually in fact now in my knowledge i have seen uh, retrograde planets are very good because now uh, i'm not meaning to say good uh, for your life or any particular area but just think that uh, if you are going somewhere and you miss something and then suddenly you remember so is it good or is it bad? It's good, right? Because then you have the opportunity to go back and uh, get that thing. Now people will say, oh, but uh, retrograde means there is some problem. No, retrograde does not mean problem. Retrograde means you are discovering the problem. Should I repeat? Retrograde does not mean there's a problem. Retrograde means you are discovering the problem. So if you say discovering a problem is uh, bad, then uh, how would be life if you did not discover and at the end you reached and you realized that you never had that which you should have had with you. So uh, those people who say that retrograde planets are bad, uh, then they, they have not understood what Jyotish is or what the ethos of the Vedas or the Upanishads or the scriptures, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam is, or what is the law of karma basically. So always remember, any retrograde planet, a retrograde planet never creates problem. Never, ever, ever. It just reflects a problem which is already there. So imagine like this, you have got an opportunity to uh, clean or to uh, clear off a problem which you are facing. So uh, would you say that is bad or that is that's good? Imagine a person has uh, got cancer and then this person uh, doesn't know that he has cancer. And suddenly one day uh, he gets an accident and then he goes to the hospital and the doctor says, oh, your accident is secondary, but primary is you have got cancer. So so therefore, uh, I, hard, I strongly disagree with this popular uh, fake YouTube astrology belief that uh, retrograde planet means something bad. Okay? So therefore, you have to get this out of your mind that retrograde planets are bad. Okay? Because if you keep uh, cursing the retrograde planets, then you don't solve the problem, right? And I do not believe in some predictive astrology superficially. My, my belief is very firm that you can only uh, change your uh, so so and so called bad planets, which everybody keeps telling you know, my Venus is bad, Sun is bad, Moon is bad, Rahu is bad, Ketu is bad, every planet is bad. <laughs> so if you if you feel that some planet is not good, then you must uh, take responsibility regarding the houses which that planet rules and also the natural Karakatwas. Okay. So without that, then you will not be able to understand what a retrograde planet is doing. And currently, why I'm saying all this? Because Jupiter, Saturn is also retrograde currently. Mercury is retrograde and Mars is going to be retrograde this year later. So uh, do not curse the retrograde planets. If you curse, then uh, it's like cursing the universe for giving you a second chance. Imagine you did a mistake. 
and now universe is giving you a second chance so you should be grateful to the universe so you should always be happy uh, that uh, jupiter and saturn they are going retrograde once in a year so that we can always correct the mistakes okay so uh, so today's video is on venus so let's discuss uh, what venus uh, will do now of course depending on your horoscope all right so if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it below and if you want a consultation from me regarding your venus or marriage or relationships you can always go to my website down below in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will be there either venus is direct or retrograde all right um, oh and yeah one small thing here uh, many of you had sent me your uh, success stories that you have um, benefited by uh, watching my video so if uh, if you have not seen that post so till now i have got so many success stories and i'm posting them once a week and i will be posting them so if you have also started some spiritual practice or joined some uh, uh, spiritual community then you can always uh, send your success story to me all right i'll be very happy to see and upload it to my community page so venus has been uh, retrograde from he went to mrigashira then he came to rohini actually and i will not go much into the dates because it's very complicated you know like keep keeping remembering dates so this date entered that date entered no but uh, <clears throat> currently is the time when uh, akshay triti was tritiya was going on it was a bit similar this energy which i have seen so uh, Akshay Titya was there on 26th April, almost two months back. So, so just see what were you doing in mid of April, I would say, in a shortcut. So, uh, suppose uh, Venus is your 10th Lord, what were you doing in matters of career that time? Okay, or Venus is your 9th Lord, something to do with your father or guru or your higher studies or whatever, whichever. Uh, it is and uh, how do you judge the effects of a planet after it goes direct actually so you have to check your dashas so whatever your dashas are indicating ultimately that happens okay so transits can never override the dashas but uh, once you have seen your dashas then you can utilize the transit so now regarding the houses which venus rules in your chart once you have uh, checked your dashas and you know the coherence okay? because the coherence is very important in astrology coherence means to see how all the dashas are playing around okay? and to analyze things in detail so if you are just doing uh, useless baseless uh, analysis like oh my son is in fifth house son mahadasha is going on uh, my mercury is in sixth house mercury antar dasha is going on what will happen no, it doesn't work like that. I have so many videos on uh, like predictive astrology. So you can, uh, you, whenever you want to predict something, you must go to the level of the nakshatras. Okay. So uh, just by seeing planetary placements and lordships, if predictions would be true, uh, life would be very much easier, right? I would not have needed to make this video or you might not have needed to watch any astrology video. It would be very easy, but that's not how astrology works. So... You have to go granular to the uh, level of the nakshatras and then you have to understand uh, how the individual planetary energies are working along with the other planetary energies. So for example, if uh, you are under Venus Mahadasha, then you have to check like this. So for example, Venus is whichever lagna you are. So depending on your lagna, the lordship of Venus will change. But Venus is the natural karak for the seventh house and the fourth house he was he is and he will always be the karakas for these two houses remember primarily the he is the karaka for the seventh house secondarily uh, he also is the karaka for the fourth house so if you are running the dasha of a planet which is lording the fourth or sitting in the fourth or in the naksh or sitting in the nakshatra of the fourth lord or the planet which is in the fourth okay not the planet in the fourth if a planet is sitting in the nakshatra of a planet which is sitting in the fourth house complicated <laughs> yeah so um, that's second level that's advanced astrology okay so for example if you are a capricorn lagna and uh, who is your fourth lord it's mars uh, aries okay so now the example which i gave was so uh, mars is the fourth lord so if you have any planet 
which is sitting in ma ma nakshatras which are ruled by Mars. Okay, so for example, if you have a planet which is sitting in Dhanishta nakshatra, then this transit becomes important for you. Or suppose you have Sun in Aries in your birth chart and you are a Capricorn Lagna. So now I said planets which are sitting in the nakshatra ruled by the planet sitting in the fourth. So now Sun is in fourth house in Aries. So which are the nakshatras ruled by Sun? Kritika is a nakshatra which is ruled by the sun. So then if a planet is in Kritika, then this will become very important or Uttar Falguni. Okay? Then this becomes very, 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 very crucial or Uttar Ashada. Because these nakshatras will always have the flavor of the fourth house because the nakshatra lord is in the fourth. Okay? Or suppose you are running the Shah of the seventh house or seventh lord or you understand, right? <laughs> <laughs> the planet sitting in the nakshatra of a planet uh, situated in the seventh house, all right? I mean, lauded by the seventh house, okay? So that's how you have to understand. And in the last 45 days, you must have felt uh, regarding the houses, uh, especially the fourth house and the seventh house, okay? Now, irrespective of your lagna, this will happen. Why? Because Venus is the original car. So whenever a planet gets retrograde irrespective of whichever houses he rules or where he's placed the uh, the karakatwas of those houses gets affected whichever houses he is karak so for example venus is the karak for fourth and seventh okay now if you are a capricorn lagna as i said then venus becomes the temporary ruler of fifth and tenth for aquarius fourth and ninth so that's a separate story but irrespective of your lagna uh, and co in coherence with your dashas, uh, your fourth house and seventh house gets affected. Okay. So now uh, seventh house can have different meanings. Uh, if you are already married, then it can mean uh, uh, things related to your existing marriage partner. Or if you're divorced, uh, then it might happen, uh, have happened. Many people told me that they were, uh, suddenly they were in contact with their ex-husband or ex-wife due to some reason. And uh, if you already have a business partner, then this can mean your business partner, okay? some uh, business partner from the past would come. And uh, why, why does it happen that whenever Venus goes retrograde, the ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, ex-husband, ex-wife comes back and they suddenly pop into your life. Why, why, why? Because this, the, whenever somebody comes back during a retrograde Venus, okay, especially your some ex-partner it means that there was some unfinished business that is why that person is coming back otherwise uh, the universe will never bring both of you together okay now unfinished does not mean that uh, you are wrong or that person is right or that person is right and you are wrong i don't mean to say that but uh, you will realize that um, somewhere deep down inside, something is uh, still there. Okay, so uh, a retrograde planet gives you the uh, opportunity to look into your past and see uh, the decisions that you made regarding relationships. Or uh, suppose for Capricorn, as I said, it's 10th Lord, right? So career or fifth house can also mean love and romance here. So um, did you make the right decision? Okay, did you, uh, did you take a decision out of haste? Okay, so sometimes people tell me that uh, they get married and then when Venus goes retrograde, they uh, want a divorce. Why? Because now the retrograde energy is forcing you to look back to your decision, which you took long back regarding marriage. Okay, and this time because this retrogression is in Taurus, which is the own sign of Venus, therefore this is a this retrogression was very beautiful because uh, they say that uh, when a planet is retrograde uh, it behaves as if it is in the opposite sign it does not go or it does not give results of the opposite sign okay but it's very peculiar energy it's it's like saying uh, i am sitting in fourth house but i am thinking of the 10th house it's like that so it's like saying venus is in taurus giving results of where taurus is depending on your ascendant but he is behaving as if he is sitting in Scorpio, because Scorpio is opposite. Okay? And Taurus is the sign of stability and security. And Scorpio is the sign of insecurity, instability, unstability, whatever. 
<laughs> okay, anything un in is all Scorpio. <laughs> Right. So anything which is standard is Taurus, you know, like uh, instability, insecurity, all the in, in, un, un, um, um, all these things you can add to Scorpio. Now, anything, Scorpio is negation, basically. Anything which is not. So security, insecurity means not security. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, so, so. So now, what 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 kind of uh, energy is this? Uh, how how do you see this Taurus and Scorpio dynamics? So Taurus Scorpio dynamics plays out very beautifully. So it could have happened that uh, the certain areas which Venus rules in your chart, they give you a feeling that um, there is there is something which I need to do to gain stability in my life. Okay, so if you have a planet in Taurus. Or if your planet transits Taurus, okay, then you may feel a deep sense, deep urge, deep desire to settle down in life regarding that planet. Mm -hmm. And that is why uh, if Venus is in Taurus, it's considered very good because then the person has a greater capacity to settle down with one spouse. Okay. Unless it is, unless the overall chart is indicating affairs or the person's character is not good, then it can have an opposite effect. Then the person, uh, if Venus is in Taurus and it's very badly afflicted, or if the overall chart is very bad, then it's the opposite. Because then Venus will not like Taurus, Venus will like Scorpio. <laughs> then what will happen is, uh, Venus may behave as if Venus hates to stay with one person. So the person will uh, keep moving like dogs from one person to another. You know, uh, two, three, four, five, they'll keep hopping like animals and dogs and uh, pigs sometimes. You know, you see that. And sometimes you will see Venus is in Taurus. Wow, fantastic. The person wants to stay with one spouse, committed, very nice. Okay. So astrology is really a very relative science, which means there's uh one rule never applies to everybody and that's the beauty of this science that all the rules are it's like a, the perfect science perfect harmonious science because all the energies uh, affect each other that is how life is okay so for example if you have a problem in t with your health your you will also be affected in your relationships your relationships will not be good okay because you, you will be mentally not happy, you'll be cranky, you'll be very needy, you'll be very desperate, then people won't like you or you may become very angry very fast. Then people will start distancing uh, themselves from you. And uh, on the other hand, if your relationships are not good, if you're home, you are always fighting with your husband or wife, then maybe that will be reflected in your office, right? And that will be reflected in your health. You, know, you will get into addictions, you will start eating sugar and all the crap basically. So therefore, um, in general, if the overall chart is good, the ascendant is good, ascendant lord is good, sun is good, moon is good, the fifth house, ninth house, these are good, and the seventh house is also decent, then Venus in Taurus is a very great placement. It's a great blessing to have Venus in Taurus. But um, if, if the chart is not good, this can be the worst curse because then Venus hates Taurus. He wants to behave as if he's like in Scorpio, okay? So now Scorpio also likes commitment, but there's a lot of fear and insecurity. You know, it's like um, many times you will see if you're uh, if there are prominent planets in Scorpio. For some people, they they get married, but uh, I, again, this is subjective to the horoscope. But what I have seen in my experiences, uh, they 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 get married or they get into a relationship not because they love that person or not because. Uh, they want that person or that person wants them, but it's just the fear of loneliness, basically. So they get into a relationship just because they don't want to stay lonely. Okay. So then, so that, that's like very peculiar. So they are seeking security like Taurus, but uh, inside internally, they are very insecure. Okay. And if things are very good, then uh, a planet in Scorpio can also behave as if he's like in Taurus. Okay, so it's it's very peculiar. You have to check the chart to analyze and understand how a planet is behaving. So if you just say a planet in Taurus is good, uh, it wants security, then you may be wrong. The person may hate security. 
okay but it's very peculiar because generally people like security okay i mean generally if you ask a person uh, will you settle down in one house or you will sleep in every uh, night in a different house okay then nobody will say you know oh, every night i want to sleep in a different house any same person will say that oh i wish i can sleep in a, my same house every day so similar is with uh, marriage or relationships but then there are some people who say oh why to stay with one spouse you know we can uh, we can just be like animals and stay like dogs with you know every night we can sleep with somebody else so yeah there are uh, there are uh, idiots crooks and thugs like this also so <laughs> So it will depend on the horoscope uh, why they are feeling like this. So if the ascendant is very bad and you know they are always tormented and they are, they are very negative by default or they have had many bad experiences, many terrible experiences in relationships or if they have been cheated very badly, then they might lose faith in uh, stable relationships. And then also it depends. If the fifth house is good, then the person may not commit to somebody because the person has a fear but wants to go into a committed relationship okay uh, but if the overall chart is bad and bad things have happened then they might be like no no no, no. We, we we don't want uh, any commitment we just want to just enjoy physically okay that's like uh, that's like the worst of worst cases but uh, yeah there are many cases like this where i see that if the overall chart is not good so then uh, the person may not like stability the person yeah, and uh, Scorpio is also the sign of drama, as in Hindi they say, drama vazi. <laughs> so, <clears throat> if if a planet is in Taurus, or if your dashas were currently good, then you would not like drama vazi because ta Taurus is not the sign of drama and you know show show off and all this. You know. uh, but if your dashas are bad, it's indicating weakness like you are unhappy inside and you are like you know going down then you will behave you would have behaved as if you are in scorpio which, which means uh you you like a lot of drama in relationships you know things are going good then you get bored you 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 want some uh, spice you know you want some controversy you want some scandal all right so that is why i said in the beginning the confluence is very important so uh, what, what what are the things that you would have felt and what are the things that will happen now? Um, to the extent your dashas and your horoscope is good, uh, now you will be moving ahead in your journey uh, in, in the search of security, okay? Because now Venus is direct. And to the degree your dashas are not supportive and uh, your overall horoscope is indicating a lot of weakness and anarthas and a lot of shortcomings which you have not mastered in many many lifetimes to that extent you will become pessimistic and you will hit uh, security actually all right so that is what i can say and whatever i said will apply 10 to 20 to at max i've seen 30 33 uh, percent in your case because you have a different ho individual horoscope you have different dashas you have venus in a different sign and you have different planets in taurus and in scorpio everything is different all right so even if one third of this, what I'm saying is matching, uh, it's it, it will be a great success. And you can let me know down in the comments, how have you felt in the last 45 days and during Akshay Tritya time, mid of April, what was going on regarding the houses which Venus rules in your chart, okay? Or in general, fourth house, home or seventh house relationships, because this will universal for all ascendants all right that is it from my side thank you for your patience and as usual if you are new then please uh, subscribe to it and if you want to see other videos on venus i'll put it here and if you want a consultation from me please go to the description section below okay what is the video all the time just look to him and you will find him